Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 14 of the YQuest series and today we're looking at the Commodore 64 here and I am totally failing to use the correct keys for this game. Well, we've looked at the Commodore 64, why are we looking at it again? Well, if you take a look at the main YQuest um, player cursor there, you'll notice it's moving rather smoothly now. We're actually using a hardware sprite for the main player character here, so that's given us some nice smooth movement there quite easily. So today we're going to look at the changes that have occurred to this version of the game to give us that hardware sprite and uh, that's hopefully made the game a little bit better. Now the first thing I'm going to point out because I'm sure the um, Commodore 64 fans are screaming at me and um, why have I only made the main character use a hardware sprite, the Commodore 64 can only support eight simultaneous hardware sprites and um, my, the game itself uses up to 56 graphics on screen that are moving around. Now if you're very clever, what you will do is you will multiplex the sprites and that is where basically you will wait for the beam to redraw a sprite and then you will move the sprite to a position elsewhere on the screen and you will basically keep moving it around as the beam redraws and that will allow you to make one hardware sprite appear in multiple places and that gives you far more sprites and you could then get 56 hardware sprites on screen at the same time. Um, I'm afraid I'm no Commodore 64 expert. I don't have code around to do that. Um, so for today's example, I've just made a single hardware sprite on the screen as a proof of concept. Um, you know, as I say, uh, it's just simply I, I'm no genius on the C64. So I'm not able, I don't have any code ready to do that and I don't want to just nick someone else's. So we're just doing a simple example today of the hardware sprite. Anyway, let's go over to today's code and let's discuss what we've done to make the game support hardware sprites. Now first of all there have been some changes to the multi-platform code. We've used the unused byte of the object definitions here which is now a hardware sprite number. If the object uses a hardware sprite number of zero then it's still going to be an old software sprite. That's the bitmap ones that move in 8x8 chunks. If it's not zero, effectively if it's one in this case, then um, it's going to use a hardware sprite. Now we're defining the player's hardware sprite within the object back here which is where we define the initial definition of the player object and so we're now using a hardware sprite number just there. Now in the multi-platform code we are checking the hardware sprite number here. If it's between 1 and 127 we're using a hardware sprite. If it's 0 or 255 then we're using software sprites. The reason 0 or 255 is the most of the objects reset to 0 except the bullet array resets to 255. So that's why we're doing that there. And that will either draw with the old software sprite code or the new hardware sprite code. Now the Commodore 64 does support up to eight hardware sprites, so we could have made a few of the enemies use hardware sprites very easily, but uh, I thought it would be a bit, um, it wouldn't really solve either problem because there's 40 enemy sprites and having few of them use the hardware sprites felt a little bit, didn't really feel like it was going to make things much better. I thought it was better just to have the player sprite using the hardware sprite to make things a bit more um, clear cut, shall we say. So that's the changes that have occurred there. Now let's just have a look at the way that the Commodore 64 supports hardware sprites. Now the hardware sprites will use a specific memory address within the system. Now if our screen memory base is at zero then these will be at a rather inconvenient address of 0F8 and that will be the definitions of the bitmap data of the hardware sprite numbers and then that hardware sprite data would be in the first hexadecimal 4000 bytes of system memory. Now that's not going to be very convenient for our program because our program's there. So what we have actually done is we've offset the screen by hexadecimal 4000 and that means that the screen RAM is at hexadecimal 6000 and our sprites are going to be at hexadecimal 5000 and our sprite definitions are going to be at 47F8 and addresses like that. So um, we're actually moving things around a bit um, and it's going to be a bit more convenient for us. Um, apart from those initial definitions of the pattern data though, there are some fixed addresses from D000 onwards for the X and Y coordinates of the hardware sprites and also some other options regarding to sort of colors. Um, extra colors because we're using the um, four color mode or the three color mode if you'd prefer to call it that because color zero is transparent and um, we, there's a few other things like you know turning on sprites things like that so uh, we've got a few addresses here that we have to work with these ones that will be relocated depending on our screen base and these ones that are fixed and we need to set them both so that's what we're going to be doing if we just go back to our c64 code here and let's have a look at what's going on now we're defining the player hardware sprite just here 
and we're defining the screen base as being 4,000 and that's offsetting all of the screen data by hexadecimal 4,000 and it's getting it nice and out of the way of our program code which is going to be helpful. Okay, now the sprite data we're using is going to be different to the background data. It's much smaller in this case because um, we need a smaller amount of data. Now we're loading it to memory address hexadecimal 1000 offset by screen base, which is going to be hexadecimal 5000 in effect because our screen base is hexadecimal 4000 up here. Now the sprites we're using today are much simpler to the regular ones because we're only loading in the sprites for the player object we've basically just got the player's Y and the explosion animation for the player that having died. Now this is quite small but this is going to be much more convenient for the amount of memory we've got. We're loading these in just here so that's where we're defining our hardware sprites and those are being loaded into the sprite RAM just here. Now when it comes to our clear screen routine we're having to remove the player sprite just here and the rest of the code is going to be down here. Now when we want to blank the player sprite we're moving the player sprite effectively off screen to position 255. The rest of the work is being done by this do get, get h sprite object function just here. Now if you remember before we had this do get sprite object which would get the settings for a sprite from the object definition. This is passed in IX and it loads the XY position, the sprite number, things like that. Do get H sprite object is the version that will use hardware sprites. Once again, we're getting the sprite frame here, although this time we're having to do things a bit differently. We're having to um, basically work in hardware sprite numbers. Now the hardware sprite pattern numbers will work from the um, base screen base itself hexadecimal 4000. Now the sprite data is offset by 1000 which is divide, divided by 64 is 64 here. So we're adding 64 to the sprite pattern number because that will select the correct hardware sprite pattern data for the sprites that we want to show. Of course because that's relative to the screen base itself. We're then defining the hardware sprite colors here with DO25 and DO26 here. We're spe specifying the hardware sprite color here because one of the colors, if you remember, is definable per hardware sprite. So we're defining that as well separately. We're loading in the Y and the X position and we're offsetting the hardware sprites so that the coordinates will look the same depending on whether the object's hardware sprite or software sprite. So that's just going to work the same. Finally, we're using this set hardware sprite function just here, and this will actually do the work of transferring the data to the correct addresses in VRAM. So we're calculating the hardware sprite number here and using that as an offset. Now, many of the settings themselves are actually using just one bit of a register for each hardware sprite. So for example, the hardware sprite enable, if we want to enable hardware sprite zero, then we would use this bit. If we're using hardware sprite one, we would use this bit, which is a bit of a pain. So what we're doing here is we're calculating the offset of the bit for the current sprite using this function here. And then what we're doing is we're masking some of the bits from our ZL0 page entry here, and we're using those with that conversion using this function here. So this function here will return a mask for the bit relating to the hardware sprite number we want to change. And so what we're doing here is we're then adding the current setting Oring in ZAS, which will now have been set to the correct setting for the current hardware sprite, depending on the entry in ZL that we've defined here. And that will set the four color option here, the double height option here, the double width option here, and that will set those all up just fine. Now, the next part is at that alternate memory address. Remember, the first part is these D range, which is always the same. The second part is these pointers here, which will vary depending on our screen base. So you can see here, we're adding the screen base to the base memory address offset by the hardware sprite number. And we are using the pointer basically to the sprite pattern data there. And that will set the sprite graphic that will be shown. Finally, we're setting the color for the hardware sprite here from ZL here. And again, we're setting the last bit of the X position here. And finally, we're setting the XY position just here. And that will set all of the settings for the C64 hardware sprite just there. It's a bit of a pain, but as I say, it does work. And hopefully that will help you out if you're trying to use hardware sprites in your code.
So there we go. So we've got Hardware Sprite working in YQuest here. Um, as I say, it's not the best example. It would Ideally, we would have everything using Hardware Sprite, but we're going to have to start using some quite complex code there, calculating um, the current drawing line and moving the sprites around. I'm afraid, as I say, I haven't got code ready for that, and it would cause other problems if there were multiple sprites on the same line, they'd start disappearing. So maybe that's something we'll have to look at in a later lesson, but that's all we're covering today. If you've liked what you've seen, please like and subscribe. As I always say, if you like the videos, then YouTube will recommend them to more people. That's the way it works, so it will help me out. If you subscribe, it just generally encourages me to spend more time working on these systems, because as you can guess, it takes a lot of time writing the examples, writing the documentation, and recording the videos. And it all takes time, so it would really help me out as well. But whatever you do, you know, if you want like what you saw today, go ahead and download the source code and do whatever you want with it. I hope it's some use to you, and I wish you all the best with your Commodore 64 programming. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye.